Hello everyone, welcome to video 14 of chapter 3. In this video, we will introduce the so-called simplex tableau. This is a detached coefficient notation. We will only record the coefficients and uh, not the variables in the tableau. Okay, so let's look at the example we had last time. So this is the LP1 that we went through last time. And we see that we were writing x123, x5, all those repetition inside. So for this, we'll have a new notation, which is written below here, as follows. So on the top, we notate the variables x1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And then down here, we record the corresponding basic variable, which is x1, x2, x3, for the three equations. And then we record the corresponding coefficient in this position here. So here is kind of a diagonal. So this first is a kind of a diagonal. And then the last two columns, we record the coefficients here. And then we draw a vertical line to say that after that is the right-hand side of the equation, and we record the numbers. And then we draw a horizontal line to show that these are the constraints, and then what comes is the objective function. And here we only record the coefficients in the corresponding position, and then we record the 60 here. Okay, so this is the tableau form. So once you recorded the problem in the tableau form, what you do next is to perform the pivoting process. And uh, the whole process can also be recorded in this tableau form. Let's look at the details. Okay, so here is the tableau form um, recording the um, pivoting process. So maybe in you could pull out the last video handout and compare. So you see um, here, the first part here is the starting point of the problem, which we had on the previous page. And then you look into the coefficients here. You see you have a negative 2. So this column will be picked up for pivoting. And then you see that they're not all negative. You have two positive terms. Then you look at the ratio between 10 over 2, which is 5, 18 over 6, which is 3, so that's smaller. Then this is your pivoting point. So we put a circle on this number. And then you carry out the pivoting process, and then you record the resulting data in the in the second part of this tableau. Okay, so we always draw a line to separate the um, constraint and the objective function. Okay, so you, you, we, have, we have the equations. You could just copy down the numbers here, okay? And then the objective function. So once you're at this step, you check for negative coefficient, and you find here, you find a negative one. Then you look at this column here. Is there anything positive? Yes, there's only one positive. So you conclude that's your pivoting point, and we put a circle on it. Okay, so that's where you pivot, and then you carry out the pivoting process here. Okay, so one more thing is, uh, after you've done the pivoting process here, we record the basic variables. Here's x1, x2, x3. Here, if you pivot here with x4, that means you take out x3, and you're putting x4 as the basic variable, okay? Okay, and then now you pivot equation, um, the first equation here, x5, meaning the x1 is now changed into x5, right? And then you record all the other um, changes and also the objective function. Once you have done that step, and then you check the coefficient here, coefficients one-third and two over nine, they're both positive, and then you conclude that you can stop. 
the optimal is reached. Okay, so um, you can pause and take a look at this tableau and uh, review it. Okay. Then you can draw your conclusion just from the last tableau. So the minimum value is negative of this item here at the value is attained at the basic solution. This is x5 value, x2 value, x4 value, and then x1 and x3, they are zero. Okay, and um, from now on, we will be using this uh, simplex tableau form in our computation because this is a much more compact way of recording all your result. Okay, um, now let's look at another example. We call this example LP2. It's taken from the textbook example 3.5.1. Okay, let's look at. So the problem is stated as follows. So we want to maximize this function subject to all, va all variables are restricted and we have three constraints. So the constraints now are given as inequality. So this means that this problem that's given here is not even in standard form. So we need to write it in standard form and then in canonical form. That will be the starting point for the simplex algorithm. So we still need to perform that step. Okay. So remember what we learned in chapter 2. That is, we can rewrite any problem into a standard form by introducing slack variables for inequalities. So we have three inequalities. Therefore, we introduce three slack variables, one for each. Okay, x4, x5, x6, they're all restricted. Then I can rewrite this. So maximization problem will change into minimization by putting a negative in front of all this, so we have all negative here, and we call this equals z, subject to, all variables are restricted, and I have the constraint. So the constraint will be, so you will add x4 to the first equation and change the less sign into equal, and you add x5 into the second and change it into equal sign, and add x6 to the third and change it into equal sign. Right, so this part we're very familiar with. Then we end up with this constraint, the set of constraints. So take a look at it. Aren't you happy? Do you realize that this is now in canonical form? We haven't done anything else other than introducing slack variables. And by just doing that, we put the equation of constraint in canonical form. Great. So this is in canonical form with the basic variable x4, x5, x6, and the right-hand side is non-negative, and the objective function is expressed in terms of the non-basic variables. Great. So that can be the starting point of our simplex algorithm. Okay, so this is one of the key points of the example, that is, use slack variables to put it in canonical form. Okay, so let's use the simplex tableau. So let's record. So the first part of the tableau is exactly the canonical form we had on the previous page. I recorded all the variable here. And these are the basic variables, and these are the coefficients, okay, and the right-hand side. And this one is the um, objective function. Okay, so let's see. If I have the objective function here, so I need to check if any of them are negative, and then I find that all of them are negative. So I need to choose one that's most negative, and I see these two are the same. So I just have to make a decision. It doesn't really matter which one you pick. So let's say I picked x2. Then I will look at this column and to find out where should I pivot. 
Okay, so is anyone non-negative? Yes, I have two. But th this one is two, this is one that both non-negative. Then the next step is to check the ratio. So 60 over 2 gives me 30, and 10 over 1 gives me 10. Which one is smaller? Well, this one is smaller. So I put a circle here to say that this is my pivoting point. I will pivot the whole thing at here. That is, I will make these and this and this all zero in my next tableau. Okay? So carry out the pivoting process, and then we will obtain the next level of the tableau. This is the second part. And we see that um, x4, x6 are preserved in the basic variables, but then the x5 is now changed, is replaced by x2. So I record it here, and then I have this tableau. Okay, now we need to search for um, check optimality or pivoting. So let's look at the coefficients for the objective function. The, this row here, I have negative 5, 9, 3. So there is one negative term. Okay, so this will be the column I will consider a pivoting point. Let me look at it. Is any of this non-negative? Uh, yes, there is one that's non-negative. Okay, then there's no need to do the ratio computation. I know this will be the point to pivot. So I put a circle there. Okay, so you will pivot here, that is to make this one and then to make all of these zero. And then the x4 is replaced by x1 as the basic variable. You see, that's what I recorded here. So this is x1 and these two are the same. And then I record um, the data here or after the pivoting. Okay, and then let's look at, um, again, check for optimality. Let's see. So in the objective function, the coefficients here are 1, 1, 1, and nobody's negative. So I conclude that optimality is reached, and uh, the minimum value is negative 70, and it's obtained at this basic solution. That's x1, that's x2, and that's x6, and the other three, x3, x4, x5, they are zero. Okay, so here is what I recorded. So this is the solution, so remember to put a negative sign here. So this is the solution of the LP problem in standard form, which gives us the minimum, okay? And recall that the original problem was a maximization problem. Okay, so let's go back to the original problem, and uh, then we can state the result. We see that at x1 is 8, x2 is 18, x3 is 0. The first three variables, they are used and the other three are slack variables. Okay, so at that, for the original problem, we get the maximum value of 70, which is the negative of the minimum. Okay, so um, let's add some observation and some comments. So the first observation, which I said already, is that um, it's very convenient um, by adding slack variables, we put the linear programming problem in canonical form. So that's a nice thing. And then second is um, a discussion on the actual solution. So we see that in the actual solution we have x4, x5 equals zero. These are slacks for the first two constraints. So that means the first two constraints will have no slack meaning the inequality is actually satisfied by the equality. And then, since the last um, slack variable is 70, strictly bigger than 0, 
then we conclude that the third constraint is actually satisfied with strict inequality. It has a slack there. Okay, let me put a few more important remarks. Um, so, the first one is the linear programming problem must be in canonical form when you set up the tableau. Okay. The algorithm starts from there. If your problem is not in canonical form, then you have to work a bit to put it in canonical form. And second, we observe that um, the algorithm ends in two cases. Okay, in our example, we had only in one case. That is when the minimum is reached, where we invoke theorem O, and the optimality criteriums are satisfied. Then you stop. And the second situation is when the limit is unbounded, where you apply theorem U, and then the limit is negative infinity. Once you concluded that, you can also end the algorithm. Okay, so we see that um, the during the computation uh, carrying out the algorithm, um, there is a repetitive step, which is the pivoting process. It's time-consuming, and it's a step that we know very well how to do. So the intellectual part is actually to decide if one needs to pivot or to make a conclusion if optimality is reached. And uh, if not, you need to decide to figure out which point you perform the pivoting process. Once those are decided, and the carrying out of the pivoting process is actually rather repetitive, and you have to do it multiple times in solving one problem. So that leads to the next great idea, Okay, so since the pivoting process is repetitive, let's ask the computer for help. So we will now introduce an applet called LP Assistant, which you can download from the course canvas, and that will perform the pivoting process to you. So the tutorial for the LP Assistant is given in Appendix D, which is explained in great detail. And I also make, I will, I, I will make two videos on how to use LP Assistant for solving the problems in our example up to now. So they will be following this video. There will be two more. So you can take a look at that as well and open up the LP Assistant by yourself and play with it. Okay, hope you enjoyed it. I'll see you next time.